Well, you're looking at this Kawasaki, and this is ridden and owned by Tom McGrain. Now, we know that all these bikes are basically all spec. They're all 450ccs. They're made by just about any maker imaginable, and they're all here tonight. But here's the big part about this class, and it's the studs on these tires. Over a 1,000 studs or screws are in this tire. Now, let's talk about side bite, which is so important when you're making those turns. If you take a look right here, this is angled just a little too much, maybe 30 degrees. It needs to be perfectly straight, so this has to be adjusted. It needs to be straight for that perfect side bite. Now, if you go up here, this is where they start to straighten out. This angled at about a 45 degree angle this way to my right is for the forward bite. This angled back this way, that's for the braking. Keeps you straight, keeps you up. It's amazing, over a thousand screw studs are in the back tire of this bike, but it's so crucial. He'll go through just about every one of these to make sure they're exactly where they need to be because it could be just that one stud, that one little screw that will screw you up. Like every other form of motorsports, Brian, it is critical on every aspect of the machine. 17 bikes here all together. We'll have a lot of heat races, 12 to be exact, and a last chance qualifier for the main event. Tonight, it's a lot about angles. You got to get the right angle on it and get the right the right drive through the corner. The track is so tight that we, we don't have much time to react, and it's, you, know, you got to work on your reaction timing. And it gets used to doing a little bang, a little bumping, because you got to be really aggressive. There's a lot of bumping. There's some more guys out here that do more bumping than usual, but um, hey, you got to live with it. It's racing, but uh, you only got four laps to deal with, so you got to make a move fast and get up front as fast as you can, because there's four laps to go very quick. With a bad hole shot, you can be bumping, you know, the whole race, every lap, every turn. It's hard to go around the top side. It's too much further around. So you really got to bump your way through on the bottom. Four laps does go fast. So if you can get out front and get away, it makes, you know, your night a lot easier. The real fast guys will run the brake through the corner, and that way you down the gas. The engine's a little bit uh, stalled out because you're on the brake so hard. So it's uh, working both together, and as soon as you get that thing pointed straight, hang on and hope you're going the right direction. So needless to say, as we go into heat highlights here, you want to get down on the bottom. If at all possible, you have to scrap your way down there. If by chance you don't want to bump the guy, there's a real good chance you'll go off trying to miss him. So it is very difficult racing. Probably most importantly, as we heard these guys say, it happens so quick. And that's how quick it can happen, as it does here to 34 Brad Rosine. As he'll try, oh, he tries to get up. Whoops. Comes right back down again. There was a time, kid, when they ran these ice bikes with no brakes at all. David Espinoza, the winner of heat race number three. Keep in mind, is your best average finishing position throughout the number of heat races that you compete in that determines your starting position. But as you can see, short of being on the inside, you can pretty much scrap your way there if, in fact, you want to get aggressive enough. Lance Wollen with the win there. We have the heat race number seven, and right off the bat, bike number 28 will take off with the lead. That is Jonathan Reed. As I mentioned earlier, only four laps on a very, very tight track. You got to run that tight line. You open up the inside at all, they will stick a front wheel in there. And yeah, they're not afraid to run over your left foot. They're all wearing protective booting, but it doesn't matter, man. You can get hurt in here pretty quickly. Man, can you just imagine? Oh, man, that was a tough hit there. Lean it over a little too far, maybe pick up the throttle a little too hard and get some tire spin. You can see him actually locking up the rear brake to set the bike right there. Kevin Anderson on board there with that number 11, and he will win. He raced number nine. Do you think they don't have traction? You can see it right there. We continue on with heat races. Another thing you might notice is the full front fender. Oh, and I talked about earlier, if you try not to hit somebody, you can get yourself in trouble. That's what happens right there. He'd have been better just to drive underneath him and put a wheel on him. But you try not to be too aggressive. You're not out there to hurt somebody or literally beat and bang with everybody. Just a, a, a split second decision is all that really is. Final heat, heat race number 12, five bikes involved all together. And again, it's all about your finishes, and you'll run several heats. Oh, man, 56 in the wall? That's Sam Wiggins. Yeah, it was Lance Wallen on the inside that pushed the other two out. The 27 bike, obviously the 56 bike, right there of Sam Wiggins. With oh. his fair share of problems, but we weren't finished as Wallen and Espinosa go down. Tom McCrane would take the win, and I got to tell you, once again, it's all based on where you finish. It's who makes the